Today, everyone, today I am going to be going over how to connect a database to Delphi. So I'll be going over all of the components you'll need and the steps you'll go through to activate the different components and get a database working in your Delphi program. So I will not be going over the basics of what a database is, how to create one, I might do that in another video, and if I do, then I'll link to it. So you should see a pop-up around now on the screen linking to that video if you are interested. But today I will just be assuming that you know how to make a database and you've got your database in your folder. So we are using this tour data database. And also in our folder, we have our project. Okay, so let's discuss how you are going to set this up. So let's look at the components you'll need. So I am going to use a component called a db grid. And this is the output. So this sort of looks a bit like a rich edit, but in fact it's going to display all of the uh, data that we have in our database table. It will all be displayed in this DB grid. You can see right now it's not showing anything, and that's because we haven't connected it. So let me go over the components you'll need to connect it. So, we are going to be dealing with an ADO connection. So you can put this on your form, and you can name it whatever you want. I will default it to CON1. Then we're also going to be dealing with an ADO tail. And I will just that, let that be TBL1. And then the final component you're going to need is something called a data source. Okay. And so these three components, when you run your program, they will be invisible. So your user will not be able to see these on the actual form. Usually we do keep these on a separate form that the user never sees, though, which is uh, called a, a, a data source form, and I'll go over doing that in a minute. But you could hypothetically have them on your main form if you wanted to. There is no real downside as they will be invisible when you actually run your program. We just put it somewhere else for organization. So let's go on to actually connecting these. So firstly, we're going to look at the connection. And what we want is a connection string. And this connection string links this component to the actual um, database, which you can find in your folder. And so for using connection string, so we opened it up by pressing the three little dots, and now for this connection string we're going to build it. And so first you have to select your provider, and we typically go for the top one, Microsoft Jet 4.0. Then we go on to our next step, select or enter a database name. So over here we're going to press the three little dots, and you're going to find the database in your folder, so it'll default to the folder you're dealing with, the folder where, which your project is in, and you can just click it over there, open it up, there we go, open it up, and now we have that connection. So over here they speak of a username, admin, enter information to log on to the database. So this we are going to turn off in our settings, but hypothetically over here, you could have settings so that you need to type in a username and a password in order to access the database. 
so that every time your program starts up and you're trying to access the database, you need to type in a username and password. We are just going to leave this blank. And this test connection button is useful to see is your string actually working? Does it actually make sense? It should make sense. Um, test connection succeeded just tells us that this is indeed we haven't made any mistakes so far. So then we can just press OK and OK and we have created that connection string. Now you'll see above it connected and you can make that true. And so you can see there's this database login over here where you need to give a username and password. We made them both blank so you can just press OK and it's now connected. But to avoid having to do this in future, to avoid having to do this every time, we're going to take that login prompt and make it false. So you could have done that first, and then you wouldn't have seen that little pop-up. So now we are done with this connection item, the ADO connection. So let's move on to the ADO table. So you see at the top there's this property called active, which is currently false. Now, if you start forgetting the steps, um, if you're unsure what to do next, then you can press active and it'll tell you what's missing. It'll tell you what you need to do. So if you forgot a step, then by pressing this active, it should tell you whatever you're missing. So don't stress too much about forgetting a step. This is the very last thing you end up doing, is activating the table. So it told us we need a connection. So have a look at connection over there. And there's a little drop down option. We want to select con1, because that is the connection we set up. That is the connection that we just created. The ADO connection called CON1. All right, so we have set that up. Now one more thing is the table name. So one database can have more than one table. So you can end up in a situation where you've got one connection, but multiple ADO tables, and they will all link to a different table. So in this case, we've only got one table, which is the learners table. So we will just select that. You could also buy a code switch so that your ADO table switches between the different tables in your database, but that's not a problem right now. We just need to select the right one. Okay, so if you think you're done at this point, then you can try activating it. And it says true. That means the connection should work and everything should be good. So now you can see still the DB grid isn't showing anything, and that's because we need to. So now we've got this connection that actually works. We need to link it to a data source. So you can see it's got the little arrows over there. That means the data source is what links this table connection to your actual components on your form that the user is going to see. So over here we've got the data set, and we're just going to connect that to table 1. So now this data source is taking table 1, and it will send it to whatever components need it. So still the DB grid is not showing what we want. So this is the very final step now. On your DB grid, you need to tell it what data source it must look at, what data source it must link to. So if you go over to data source over here, you can see data source 1. We will just select that. And now we can see all of our data on this DB grid. And you can see you can scroll down it, so you can see everything in here. So let's save everything and see if this runs. And here we go. So this is the running program. 
and the user can navigate through all of this information using the scroll wheels and you can see there's nothing, none of the components down here are shown. This is the usefulness of a DB grid and you'll find it is also useful in some other ways that you'll learn as you go through IT. So that is how you connect it. Now let's talk about what you'll probably want to do in the future. A recommended procedure is to have this connection, this table and this data source in a separate form. And so what we're going to do is we are going to make a new and then we are going to make an other. We are going to select a data module under Dolphy files. It should be the default thing that's open, but if not, Dolphy files, data module. Okay, so this is a data module and this is something that the user never ever sees. And you can resize it if you want, just like a form, but this is really meant only for this connection and this table and this data source to live. So let's do this one more time. So I'll do this a bit quicker this time. We're going to put it all over here, but first we should save it. And now this is a, this is considered a new unit. So we will call this our data. And you can see it's now called data, but over here it's still data module one. So we could rename this if we want to. Okay, so what do we need? We need an ADO connection. See if you can remember the other things. We also need an ADO table. And the final thing we need, you remember, it is a data source. All right, so these are the three important components that you'll need. So if you know this, then you should be sorted. So in your um, actual exams, usually this connection exists already, so you don't need to set up this connection, but it is still a very useful uh, procedure to remember because you're going to be doing it a lot in exercises and in your CAT. And obviously right now I'm talking if you are a learner who is doing this in your IT. So let's quickly go over this. So firstly connection, we want a connection string. So we're going to build that, we'll select JET, we will find it in our folder, we'll open it, we'll make this blank, we'll say OK and OK. Now we'll turn off the login prompt and we will make it connected. Next, the table. So over here we want to say what's the connection we are connected to CON1. Alright, what's the table name? We're going to select learners. And now we're going to activate it. Now for our data source, we're going to say the data set is table 1. And now that is done. So let's just save all our changes and move on. So over here, data source, there are no data sources available. And the reason for that is we need to connect this data module to our main program. So in the code, in our uses, we are now going to add data. And let's see, does that work? Do we now have it? There we go, data module one dot data source one. And now it works, it's connected. And now we don't have anything on our main form. So we've just moved everything over to this little module over here. So that is how you um, connect to your databases. Now, you don't always need a DB grid, depending on what your program needs to do. 
sometimes you um, might want to use a rich edit and I'll go over more of the actual coding uh, of how you end up using these things in code I'll go over that another day so I hope that was useful for you if you have any questions for me or if you have any requests for what I should cover next then leave a comment below if you enjoyed the video then like and subscribe because I, I would really appreciate the support and it would encourage me to keep making these videos if you want to contact me for private tutoring then look in the description for the link to my website but more than anything thank you for being here and remember you're smarter than you think.